So to style the buttons here, we're going to add another tag around the buttons just to make it easier to center them. So let's add a div tag here and we'll get it the class of center. This, this class center doesn't mean anything yet. We're going to style it and reference this element with the by using this class. And oops, can close it here. So now we have this container with the class of center and we have two el input elements inside which are just our submit buttons. So now we have this invisible container wrapping both of them and we're going to use it to center these buttons. So let me save this and go back to the CSS file. So we're going to reference the container called center, the class we made. Now center can be used to reference any element. In other words, we could we could have given a class of center to any tag. And to show that it's a class and not a tag, we put a dot first. Instead of here where we're just referencing an HTML tag. So you can see that our class center, our div tag there, spans the whole width of the page. So we want to center it. So here we're just going to put text align and set it to center. And great, both of our buttons are now centered. So we could style the buttons a little bit more, but we're going to leave them like that for now, just so we can finish up the page and go to the footer. So we already styled the footer a little bit when we did the list items up here. But if, if we look at this footer, it does have a background, a little, maybe a one or two pixel border on top and also the links down here in line. So let's first put the footer. Oops. Okay. So let's first fix the footer to the bottom. So we want to change the positioning. So to, to be able to fix the footer to the bottom of the page, we're going to put position as fixed. Now we're going to put the bottom, we're going to set bottom to zero. So see how it moves our footer so it's touching the bottom. But we still want the first three to be fixed to the left. So how are we going to reference them? If we look in our HTML, we see that they're both called UL so if we reference one UL tag, oops, if we reference one UL tag, it's going to reference both of them. So I'm going to give a quick class to these. I'm going to call this one as our left. I could call these whatever I wanted, but I'm just going to call it left. And I'm going to call this one right. Great. So now I can reference them in my CSS. So now that it's fixed to the bottom, I'm going to take class of left and I am going to float this to the left. Okay. And now the other one, I am going to, I'm going to take class right. And I'm going to do margin right 20 pixels. And text line right. Oh, I forgot. For the footer, we need to do a width. If you can see our width is only this this much. So even if it aligns to the right, it's not going to go further than its container. So I have to reset the width to 100%. Great. So you can see these are floated to the left and these ones are floated or these ones are aligned to the right. So they display inline 
The only problem is we have this little bit of space here. Actually, we didn't put that space there. It's default browser spacing. So to get rid of it, I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to reference the body tag. So every browser adds some spacing and some automatic like default styling to elements, but we just want to get rid of it here. So we're going to set the margin to zero. And you can see everything moved over a little bit. Now if we go back, uh, let me make this smaller again. Okay. Now if we go back down, you can see it's flush with the side over here. So the page is looking good. We can style it a little bit more. Let's actually add a background to the footer. So, oh, there we go. Now our footer looks normal. Let's add a background. So there's a couple different background properties. We're just going to use the background color here. And the color we can use a name like blue and it'll make a blue background or we can use a hex value like we could say three 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 and this makes like a dark gray color so we can use a hex value like this we could also use an RGB color yeah. to start with you could probably just type in any basic color like gray orange oops, orange white black um, teal, lots of different colors that you can type in. And even you can see in brackets it auto, it gives you some options. Did you mean to type in orange red? So there's a lot of default colors you can use just by typing in the name. And you can always search and see what other colors you can use. For right now, I want kind of a light gray, so I'm going to put three D's and that gives me a light gray because F, if I put three F's, that would be white. So it's pretty close to white. Great. So we did have over here, we do have a, like a one pixel border on top. So I am going to put a border on top of the footer. So let me reference border top. One pixel. One pixel. And then we can say here, if we want it solid, dotted, I'm just going to put this 10 pixels real quick so we can see it. Um, if we want it solid, dotted, we want our solid, you can see the, the thick border over here. We're going to fix it in a second. And then we can put the color. So we want ours kind of a dark gray, a little bit darker than what we had before. So I'm going to put maybe an A. A. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'm just going to set it to one pixel instead of 10. Click away and you can see the border on top. That looks good. Another thing we can fix with the styling is when you look, you can notice the font is all sans serif. And here we have serif font. So we can fix that easily for the whole document. If we go to the body tag and we can put font family, there's a lot of, there's a bunch of built-in fonts and browser defaults, and you can also download a ton of different fonts from Google and other places. But we're just going to use a basic sans serif font. Awesome. So you can see it changed our fonts to all sans serif there for the whole document. Another thing I'd like to do is we need to make these links. When you scroll over these links, an underline appears and your cursor changes. So to do that, we actually have to change our HTML. So for each list item, we need to make it into a link. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And we need to, a link tag is just A. It stands for anchor tag. And the only thing you need to put in the link tag is in href, which is just the link to where it's going to go to, but we don't have our link going anywhere yet. So we are just going to put a hashtag, meaning nothing is there yet. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So now 
if I save this and go back to our other page, you can see now it appears as a link. It messed up our styling a little bit, but we're going to fix it in a second. So let me just do this real quick. We have all of these as links, but we want the underline to only appear when we scroll over and also we want them to display as black. So let's save save this and go to our CSS and at the bottom let's style our anchor tags. So just reference the A and we want the color instead of the default blue we want it just to display as black. So you can see it changed to black now and we want the text decoration which will be the underline as none. Great. So now it's displaying just as we want, but we also want it to underline one on hover. Referencing the anchor tag again, but this time we're going to use a colon and hover. And this is going to tell the browser what to do when someone hovers over the element with a cursor. So on hover, we want the text decoration to be underlined. Great. So now, when we hover over any one of these links, it should underline. So this is basically it. If you look at our model, it's very similar in styles, and everyone's is probably going to look a little bit different here. This is one I built um, a long time ago. So the buttons are a little bit different. We can actually change these give them some padding. Um, we can reference the buttons by their input also. So we can say input type equals submit. Because if you remember in our HTML, the button type is submit for both, both of these buttons. So let's go back here. Type is submit. And Let's make some padding. Um, let's say we want four pixels. No, actually, for, well, for the top and bottom, we probably want about four pixels and a little bit more for the right and left. So we can do maybe 10 pixels for the right and for the left. Here we have the edges curved a little bit around. So I'm going to just curve them real quick. Um, for curved edges, either on images, buttons, text inputs, anything, we can put a border radius. We can put a percentage if we wanted them to be completely circular or oval. We could put 50%, which changes the buttons like this. Um, but we just want a little bit of a curve on the edges, so we're going to put Let's say uh, three pixels. Let's do four pixels. So you can see there's a little bit of a curve. And the last thing, when we hover, we want the cursor to change to be the same, just as if it was a link on the buttons. So let me copy this. And Let's do another hover style. And let's say we want our cursor to change to the hand, which is just called pointer. So let's save this. And then you can see it looks like a button now. Awesome. Thanks for watching this series on styling a Google homepage. This is my first series that I've done on YouTube. So if you have any other questions, leave me a comment or send me a message. Thanks.